boys and girls, and welcome back to Friendship Kids. I hope you guys are having an awesome summer. I'm even enjoying the outside weather right now. Well, I'm excited to continue our big redemptive story as we conclude the life of David this week. Even though we've seen all the ups and downs of David's life, in today's lesson, we're going to see that through it all, David is going to write a song of praise to God for all that he has done in his life. And I'm excited to jump into that. But before we do that, I want us to start with a word of prayer. So let's go ahead, close your eyes, bow your heads, and pray along with me. God, thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for the Bible where we can learn about you and learn about believers from the past. As we look at today's lesson, when we look at the Psalm of David, God, help us to be more appreciative for who you are and how you've led us, just as you led David. God, I pray you'll be glorified in all that is said and done in the lesson today. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, well, this is the last week for our big picture question that we've been learning the last several weeks. So let's take a look at that big picture question, recap a little bit about David's life, and then jump into today's lesson. Our big picture question has been this. How is Jesus the perfect king? We know Saul wasn't a perfect king. We definitely saw last week that David wasn't the perfect king. So how is Jesus the perfect king? I hope you know the answer by now. Jesus perfectly rules over the universe as the king of kings. Jesus has never sinned, and he rules over the entire universe with nobody above him. He is the king of kings. Now, though Jesus is the king of kings, we've learned that Israel wanted a human king. They thought that that was a better plan, and they quickly found out that Saul was nowhere close to as good of a king as Jesus was. God mercifully gives them another king who would obey God and who would follow his commands. And that king was David. We learned several weeks ago that God chose David to be king instead of Saul. We then learned that David had an opportunity to kill his enemy Saul. But as we learned in the lesson, David showed mercy even though Saul hated him. The story continued, and we saw that God made a covenant with David. God promised that the Messiah would come from David's family. There is no greater blessing that David could have received than that gift from God. The story continued, and we saw that because David had received this grace from God, he was able to show that same grace to others. We saw that David showed kindness to Jonathan's son. Even though Jonathan was Saul's grandson, David was kind to him. But just when we thought David had reached his peak, sadly, last week, we saw that David was not a perfect man. David stole another man's wife and had a man killed. But thankfully, in the end of the story, we saw that David repented of his sin and God mercifully forgave him. Well, that's been quite a ride in David's life. And in today's lesson, we're going to see through it all that David, a man after God's own heart, writes a song of praise to God. David writes a psalm sharing the ways in which God has led him, the ways in which God has satisfied his heart, and the way in which God has been David's shepherd. That's right. This psalm is Psalm 23, a song of praise, and we are going to learn about it this week. Many of you may already know this psalm. David was once a young shepherd boy, and so he had a unique perspective on what it meant to be a shepherd. And in Psalm 23, David speaks about how God has been his shepherd. There is much that we can learn about our God as we look at Psalm 23 and this psalm that David wrote about God. This week's lesson, we're going to see that David wrote a psalm to praise God. So I want us to watch this video together, learn about our God, and see what David had to say about God being our shepherd. Bye. 
Bible times, people wrote songs called Psalms to praise God. David loved God with all his heart, and he wrote many of the Psalms in the Bible. Before David was a king, he was a shepherd. He fought off lions and bears to protect the sheep. When David thought about God, he realized that God is like a shepherd. This is a psalm that David wrote about God. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He gives me strength. And he leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I do not fear danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will be with me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. David compared God's love, protection, and guidance for his people to that provided by a shepherd for his sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd. He laid down his life to save people from sin. Because of Jesus, we have a hope that one day we will live with God forever. Wow, guys, isn't that really cool? David was a shepherd, and so he knew exactly what it meant to lead, guide, take care of sheep. And because of that unique perspective, he realized that God was the perfect shepherd. And he has been leading, guiding, taking care of David his whole life. Psalm 23 is just a beautiful picture of God being a shepherd and we being the silly sheep. God is the one that deserves the praise as the good shepherd. And we just rest in his ability to guide, provide, and lead us. Though the whole chapter of Psalm 23 is filled with rich truths about God, I want us to look at just one simple verse, Psalm 23, 1, for this week's verse. So let's take a look. It simply says this, a short verse, but filled with an amazing truth. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Boys and girls, David is writing this and he says, you know what? I've been a shepherd, but God, the Lord is my shepherd. And the second part of the verse says, I shall not want. Boys and girls, you know what it means to want something. It's to have a desire for something, thinking that there is something out there that will make us happy, will make us fulfilled. And you know what David is saying here, boys and girls? He's saying, the Lord is my shepherd, and because of that, I shall not want anything. There is not anything in my life, David is saying, that is lacking. Because the Lord is my shepherd, he will provide all things that I need. He will satisfy my heart. There is nothing outside of being God's child that I am lacking for satisfaction. David says simply, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And boys and girls, I hope that that is the cry of your heart. Because you are a child of God, you have absolutely everything that you need. Psalm 23 was written as a song of praise to God. And God is definitely worthy of our praise. And so I want us to sing a song of praise to God as we worship Him and think about all that He is. As we sing our theme song for the year, God of Wonders. Who is so great a God as our God? 
Thou art the God that dost wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Who is like unto the Lord most high? Who filled the seas and formed the skies? Who walks upon the wings of the wind? Whose thoughts no All right, great singing, boys and girls. Let's see what you remember from this week's lesson. Question number one is obviously our big picture question. And it is, how is Jesus the perfect king? Do you remember how we said Jesus is the perfect king? Well, this is the last week to get it. I really hope you know it by now. The answer is Jesus perfectly rules over the universe as the king of kings. All right, question number two, worth eight points. And the question simply is this, what is a psalm? We said that David wrote a psalm to God. Do you remember what we said a psalm was? Well, though we don't quite know the tune in which David sang this, a psalm is a song. David wrote the chapter in this week's lesson as a song of praise to God. All right, question number three. Who wrote most of the psalms in the Bible? As I just said, there are 150 psalms in the Bible. And not all of them were written by the same person but most of them were written by this man. Now, this question is only worth three points because I think it's fairly obvious if you paid attention at all in today's lesson. That's right. The answer is David. David wrote most of the songs. Question number four, worth five points. What was David's job before he was king? 
David had this job even as a young boy, and it helped his understanding as he wrote the song in today's lesson. Do you remember what that job was? I think you do. David was a shepherd. Okay, the last question. Question number five worth nine points. And the question is this. What chapter in Psalms did this week's lesson focus on? Remember, there are 150 Psalms in the Bible. But the song that we focused on in today's lesson was from what chapter? Do you remember which chapter the lesson was from? Well, it's a very famous chapter in the Bible. And if you don't know it by now, I hope you will get familiar with it. It is Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is an awesome chapter in the Bible. Boys and girls, we have learned a lot about the life of David, but this week just shows us exactly why God called David a man after his own heart. David absolutely loved God. And as we see in the last verse of Psalm 23, the chapter that we focused on in this week's lesson, David concludes the psalm by saying, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What David is saying is, God, I always want to be in your presence. I always want to spend time with you. And boys and girls, you know that we can do that very same thing. We spend time with God by spending time in God's word. And we can spend time in prayer. And I hope that all of our hearts are just like David's and saying, God, I always want to dwell. I want to stay in your presence forever. What an awesome goal for each of us and what an awesome privilege that we have been given because of what Jesus has done on the cross for us. All right, boys and girls. Well, as we conclude the life of David, I encourage you this week to read Psalm 23 for yourself. Open up your Bible, read Psalm 23 and pray from your heart, just as David, the words of that song. I hope you'll become really familiar with the words of that very precious song. Well, boys and girls, we've concluded the life of David, but just as God promised, the next king of Israel will be a part of David's family. Matter of fact, it's David's son, Solomon. And so I can't wait to dive into David's son and see what God does during Solomon's time as king. But we'll have to wait till next week to dive into that lesson. And I encourage each of you to come back as we continue with our big redemptive story. But until then, have a great rest of your week. We miss you guys. Hope to see you soon. But we'll see you here next week at Friendship Kids. Friendship Kids.